On this week's Goal Show, football for the festive period. It's the Emperor's Cup semi-finals in Japan. Stars of yesteryear turn out for charity in Brazil. We're down under for a full programme of holiday fixtures in the A-League. And in Belgium too, where love was in the air ahead of the Pro League winter break. We start in Japan, where the 92nd Empress Cup reached its semi-final stage at the weekend, and Gamba Osaka took on Kashima Antlers, eager to put the misery of their recent relegation behind them. Demoted from the J-League's top division in early December, Gamba stole an early lead here when Yashihito Endo's cross found its way into the net. The veteran Japan international profiting from a stroke of fortune, something which had deserted Gamba in 2012. Endo almost doubled his tally soon after. No doubting his intentions this time as his effort struck the crossbar. The woodwork would also deny Yuya Osako as Kashima pressed for an equaliser. They finished mid-table in the J-League and their pursuit of silverware rarely looked like continuing in the second half. Gamba's Adahiro Inago was denied at the near post by defender Diego Nishi before Shinzo Kuroki's long-range effort almost saw Kashima force extra time. Well, that's the kind of threat he poses. But Gamba held on to ensure a place in the final of a competition they won in 2008 and 2009. Second Empress Cup final and the final score here at the Akopa Stadium. It's Gamba Osaka 1, Kashima Antlers 0. The other semi-final saw 2011 J-League champions Kashiwa Reisol face the Yokohama F Marinos. Yokohama finished fourth in the J-League this season, one place short of an AFC Champions League place. With their eyes on the prize, here they suffered a blow as Kashiwa took a 23rd minute lead when Masata Kudo guided in a header after Masakatsu Sawa's effort had been cleared off the line. as Masato Kudo manages to knock that in on the rebound. Sawa first, trying to set that up, Nakazawa defence on the line and there it is, Kudo slams that one in. Yokohama's Manabu Saito asked questions of the Kashiwa goalkeeper with this dipping effort, but Kashiwa protected their lead until half-time. Kashiwa, who last won the Emperor's Cup in 1975, upped the tempo after the break. Kudo was unable to add to his first goal here, however. Yokohama pushed in vain for an equaliser, but this late scramble summed up their frustrations. The race all defence holds very strong. It's a big scramble there in the box. Kashiwa into the Emperor's Cup final for the first time in nearly four decades. And there it is, full time, right here at the Tokyo National Stadium as Kashiwa Reisol make it through to the finals of the 92nd Emperor's Cup in search of their third title. Final score, Kashiwa Reisol won, Yokohama F. Marinos nil. Klaasian Huntelaar's decision to sign a new contract with Schalke kicks off our roundup of the stories that made the headlines over the festive period. The 29-year-old Dutch international has committed his future to the Bundesliga club until 2015. It follows Schalke's decision to replace head coach Hoop Stevens with Jens Keller. Huntelaar has been strongly linked with a host of clubs across Europe, including Liverpool. Brazil and Valencia goalkeeper Diego Alves told us he thinks superstar striker Neymar should be the one to choose if and when he makes the switch to play for a European club. The 20 year olds expected to leave Brazilian side Santos in the near future and follow the well trodden path to one of Europe's biggest clubs, with Barcelona and English champions Manchester City amongst those being linked. Neymar is already a great player, but I'm certain that Neymar will be even better when he moves to Europe. He's got a very special status in Brazil, and I don't see any other player there that can match him. He needs this leap of faith to come to Europe to show himself more to the world and to learn more as a player. But he's the one who should choose the right time to come. Eu tenho certeza que ele vai saber escolher a hora certa, o momento correto para poder dar esse salto aqui para nós. Liverpool boss Brendan Rodgers gave indication that he'll offer Steven Gerrard a new contract at the club. 
Gerard, who's 33 in May, has 18 months to run on his current deal and looks set to see out his career at Anfield. Come at the end of that, he's, he's still going to be in great condition. And this is a man who, since he's 16 years of age and become a footballer, he's, he's looked after himself uh, the best way possible. And when you do that right the way through your career, it always gives you that chance later on in your life and career to, to extend you know, your playing time for as long as you can. So Stephen's 32 now. He's got a lot of more younger talents around him. Um, he hasn't scored maybe as many goals as what he's done in previous years, but uh, there's a number of you know reasons for that. But it certainly hasn't been because of his quality. You know, he's an outstanding captain for the club, been brilliant for me in my time here, and I really believe that once that contract is up, then I'm sure uh, we'll sit down over the next numbers of months and, uh, and and look to extend that. Gerrard set to be joined at Liverpool by Daniel Sturridge as the January transfer window swings open for business this week. The England international forward will move for a reported fee of £12 million, with Liverpool keen to strengthen their squad. An England international less certain of his future going into the new year is Frank Lampard. The Chelsea star was reported to have been told he could leave the club before scoring twice in the European Champions 2-1 win at Everton on Sunday. Lampard is a great player, he's a good professional, he's doing well for us and I will try to bring the best from him until the end of the season. You never know but my job is to try to keep him fit, happy and scoring goals. Sir Alex Ferguson escaped punishment for his conduct during Manchester United's Boxing Day victory over Newcastle. The English FA elected not to take action against the United boss after he confronted officials during his side's 4-3 win at Old Trafford. The news came as the FA wrote to QPR boss Harry Redknapp and Manchester City's Roberto Mancini after they made remarks about officials following their Boxing Day games. Gareth Bale's hat-trick for Spurs in their 4-0 win at Aston Villa left their manager singing his praises. Andre Villas-Boas was thrilled with the Welshman's contribution as Tottenham climbed to third in the Premier League. I mean, he's up there with the best, you know, he's showing a, you know, a tremendous um, uh, skills and talent, I think, improving every day, uh, such a young player. And, uh, and uh, helping the team. So, uh, you know, I think um, we recognize he's, uh, he's uh, one of our major assets. You know, his personality is, uh, is wonderful, going through a moment, uh, an excellent moment of his uh, professional and personal life. So, um, you know, uh, at the moment we are, we are uh, benefiting from that. Uh, Newspaper reports in Spain suggested Lionel Messi had been the subject of a staggering £205 million bid from a Russian club. That's the release clause fee believed to be written into the Barcelona star's recent new contract. Angie Makashkala were understood to have offered the Argentine a £24 million a year deal, which he turned down. La Liga's bottom side, Deportivo La Coruña, sacked head coach Jose Luis Ultra on Sunday. The side from northwest Spain of only two wins from 17 games, going into the winter break in Spain, so decided to act. And finally, newspaper reports on Sunday suggested David Beckham could be on his way to China. Shanghai Shenhua becoming the latest club to be linked with a 37-year-old who left LA Galaxy in December. Didier Drogba and Nicolas Anelka are already at the Super League club, with a big money offer supposedly set to tempt Beckham to Asia. Over 50,000 people packed into the new Gremio Arena in Porto Alegre for the 10th annual match against poverty in Brazil last week. This year, the two teams were captained by Brazilian footballing legend Ronaldo and France great Zinedine Zidane. Zidane's team started brightly, hitting the post twice and having a goal ruled out for offside before Bebeto struck at the other end to give Ronaldo's side the lead. Good. The Zidane 11 got back on level terms after the break and they went ahead soon after thanks to a spectacular volley from their captain. The lead didn't last long though, Kaká finishing off this flowing attacking move to level things up once again.
And Ronaldo's team would have the final say. Leandro Damiao's powerful right put at strike, making the final score 3-2 to the Ronaldo 11. Their captain was happy with the result, but was also keen to stress the event's wider significance. This year's match aimed to raise money for charitable projects in Brazil and Africa. It was nice. Even injured, I had to be there participating. It was great because Grêmio Stadium is spectacular. The crowd came here and I think we got the message across. Everyone talked about it. We're trying to fight against poverty, and I'm very pleased about the score and everything in this party. It's nice that everything was all right. It was a great honor to be in this game, to be playing alongside big Brazilian idols, my idols as well. It was a pleasure to help some people. That's the most important thing. Coming up in part two of this week's goal show, Sydney FC go in search of a much needed win in the A-League. And champions Anderlecht look to make it 10 in a row in Belgium. Welcome back to this week's goal show. Still to come, the Newcastle Jets bid to make it back-to-back -back wins in the A-League and highlights from the final round of games ahead of the winter break in Belgium. Top faced bottom as the Central Coast Mariners travel to Sydney in the A-League on Thursday. Sydney had taken just 10 points from 13 games and struggled early on. Daniel McBreen and Joshua Rose both carved out opportunities as the Mariners started brightly. Here's Dejuan, he's on the ball, here's Rose on target. Central Coast were aiming to stretch their unbeaten run to 10, but were lucky not to fall behind late on as Ryan Grant saw his shot come back off the bar. That should have served as a wake-up call for the Mariners. Instead, Sydney scored with their next attack. Brett Emerton's emphatic header sparking scenes of joy among the home fans. Central Coast's frustrations boiled over as they had two men sent off late on as Sydney and Alessandro Del Piero claimed their first home win under new boss Frank Farina. Western Sydney Wanderers travelled to Perth glory knowing a positive result would move them up to third, but it was the home side who dominated for long periods at the Patterson Stadium. Yet the deadlock was broken against the run of play when Kosovo-born Labanot Hiliti struck for the visitors before half-time. Well tracked, well risen, cuts inside him and Vandenbrink just leaves him as well. Glory continued to keep Kovic busy as both Shane Smeltz and Liam Miller tested the Wanderers' shot stopper. Bends in the ball and uh, Kovic has missed it. Did he get a glove to it, the keeper? Eventually, their efforts were awarded when Nick Ward fired in the equaliser three minutes from time. Despite piling on the pressure, Glory couldn't find a winner and the Wanderers held on for a point. Following a 6-1 thrashing in their previous game, Adelaide United were determined to bounce back when they hosted champions Brisbane Raw. A Michael Theo error nearly let them in early after Bruce Jeet's low shot. Vassard Farisha then forced a terrific reflex save from Eugene Galekovic at the other end minutes later. Second bottom at the start of the day, Brisbane were dominating possession but creating few chances, although Ben Halloran did force another good save from Galekovic late in the first half. It took a special individual effort from Mitch Nichols to finally break the deadlock after half time. Nichols now into the area. Mitch Nichols has done brilliantly. Enrique! The raw forward beating two defenders before teeing up Henrique for the easiest of finishes. Have the reward. It was just a second goal of the season for the Brazilian. Adelaide hadn't lost at the Hindmarsh Stadium all season but failed to muster a challenge in the final half hour. Brisbane holding on for a 1-0 win, which moves them back towards the top six. Adelaide losing consecutive matches for the first time this season. The final round 13 game saw Melbourne victory come up against the Newcastle Jets. 
The home side hit the front early. New Zealander Marco Rojas on target from distance. Archie Thompson made it two for the hosts on the stroke of half-time with a neat finish after good work from Billy Seleski and Rojas. The Jets were much improved in the second period and another long-range effort half the deficit after 63 minutes. Ruben Zakovic finding the back of the net with a well-struck low effort. Newcastle were then level just nine minutes later. Emil Heskey with his seventh A-League goal via the crossbar. All the way back come the Newcastle Jets. But the victory fans were singing again when Rojas grabbed the winner 16 minutes from the end. Another excellent goal sealing the points at AAMI Park and the second straight win for Melbourne victory. Elsewhere in the A-League, Wellington Phoenix beat Melbourne Hart. Two goals from Jeremy Brockie helping the New Zealanders to victory. So this is how the A-League looks ahead of the New Year fixtures this week. Central Coast too clear at the top after winning eight of the 13 games they've played. Sydney are off the bottom, replaced there by Melbourne Hart. Love was in the air ahead of the festive clash between struggling and Vaslan Beveren and racing Genk in the Belgian Pro League. Before Wednesday's game, Beveren's mascot got down on one knee to propose to his girlfriend. Yeah. But their team didn't appear to read the script. Some sloppy defending allowing Yellow Bossen to give Genk a first half lead with his 19th of the season. Beveren were looking to extend a three-game unbeaten run, though, and fought back in the second half. Israeli striker Barak Badash took advantage of Brian Hamalainen's slip to slide home the equaliser. Age had seen a run of three straight wins and with defeat to Club Bruges, so they were hoping to return to winning ways against Bear Scott. Standard dominated the opening half here, and the pressure eventually told as Michi Bachuari opened the scoring just before the break. Bear Scott goalkeeper Stein Steinen could only parry Frederick Bulo's initial effort into the path of Bachuayi. Bear Scott failed to recover from that setback, and standard captain Yelly Van Dam increased his side's advantage nine minutes into the second half. Van Dam rising unmarked to beat Steinen from Paul Mpoku's pinpoint delivery. Two soon became three, as Imo Ezekiel made amends for an earlier miss, slicing through the hearts of the Bear Scott defence to sweep home. The Nigerian playing a neat one-two with the influential Mpoku before guiding the ball home. the final score, Standard's 12th league win of the season, enhancing their hopes of qualifying for the UEFA Champions League. Anderlecht were looking to extend their winning streak to 10 games against Lowly Lierse in the final game before the Belgian winter break. It took the champions half an hour to break through, and it was a familiar face with the goal. Yeah. 
Matthew Musi Mbokani with his 15th of the season to put Anderlecht ahead. And the home side further cemented their dominance with a second, this time from former Liverpool man Milan Jovanovic. The 31-year-old Serbian coolly slotting underneath Matt Sells. It didn't get any easier in the second half as Tom de Sutter guided in a third. The game had no shortage of quality finishing. Mohamed El Gabas's volley was little more than consolation for Lears, however. Anderlecht saved the best until last. Ronald Vargas volleying home a Jovanovic cross to wrap up the points in stoppage time. It was only his second goal of the season, but it's one he'll certainly remember as he put the gloss on Anderlecht's 10th straight league win. Elsewhere in Belgium during the 22nd round of fixtures, Zulta Varaga maintained their fine form with victory over Leuven. Likewise, Lockeren, who dispatched bottom club Circle Bruges ahead of the three-week winter break. Anderlecht lead the Pro League by eight points in pursuit of their 32nd championship. The top six will all feel confident of remaining there ahead of the playoffs in the spring. Circular Bruges and Lies occupy the bottom two with Beer Scott also loitering precariously. The Pro League season resumes on the weekend of the 19th of January. Goal of the week time now. Our latest winner is Courtrike's Cameroonian striker Ernest and Four. His goal against Lockeren in the Belgian Pro League, earning nearly 50% of the votes in our global poll on goal.com. Coming up, five more goals from the last seven days from which to pick your favourites. First up, the first of two corkers from Marco Rojas for Melbourne victory. The Kiwi Stars winner against Newcastle Jets being goal two. Goal three is also from the latest round of A-League games. Nick Ward's blockbuster for Perth against Western Sydney. Goal four is from Belgium. Nigerian Imo Ezekiel on target after a fine run for Standard Liège in their matchup with Bear Scott. And finally, goal five, Venezuelan Ronald Vargas scoring Anderlecht's final goal of 2012 against Lies. You have until Friday to vote for your favorite goal from our selection. Simply head to the video section on goal.com to register your vote. We wish all our viewers a very happy and prosperous 2013. On next week's goal show, the Emperor's Cup final takes centre stage in Japan. And the regular A-League season reaches its halfway stage down under.